So let's talk about the markets in three minutes. And let's start with commodities. I know you'll talk more in detail about what's going with copper in about half an hour. But this is, you know, is this a copper? This isn't copper specific, is it? We're worried about oil prices not going up but coming lower in this context. Worried about recession fears sticking to commodities, sticking to iron ore in, in ways that they haven't, you know, the, uh, that particular asset class has been brushing off recession fears of late. You're absolutely right. This is not about copper specifically. It's about the, the, the general theme in commodities, about this growth fears, recession fears. But copper is very important. It is the key industrial metal. Um, and I think that it's, it's really one about the, the, the green transition, the kind of excitement, the, the bullishness of what we're kind of doing. So I think it both reflects the uh, recession fears and also a little bit of a waning of the ESG transition. It's this idea, hey, we're suddenly using coal again enthusiastically. Maybe we not, might not be electrifying the, the global economy as quickly as we thought. Okay, so there's something more fundamental, a bit more structural going on there as well. What are your thoughts then on Jerome Powell? We will talk to uh, Stephen Major at HSBC shortly. What did he take away from it in terms of the bond markets but did you what did you think did you think he was gloomier acknowledging you know the risks of recession and thinking about how difficult it is to engineer a soft landing was that gloomy or were we just more sensitive to that kind of negative uh, vibe i think he wasn't more gloomy i think it was exactly in line with last week um but it's a market that is very attuned looking for the words recession he got targeted around that and it's because he got targeted around that he had more sound bites around recession um but i think that the general message on interest rates is very much the same they're very focused on inflation they're going to keep on raising rates aggressively while they target inflation until they get inflation under control. They're not going to be dissuaded by the, the growth picture, the unemployment picture in the short term. Um, and therefore, a recession is a possibility. But I think it shows how the market is sensitive to that story at the moment. And some of the underlying data may be justifying that negativity, that sense of gloom, negative surprises on the city, uh, you know, their city negative surprises index, uh, sort of flashing a few warnings. Uh, absolutely. The data has been very, very soft recently. But I think, again, we've got to go what picture we're in originally. And, and, I, and one of my reasons why I don't think we get a US recession recession this year and why I think the current uh, bout of fear and recession is a little bit overhyped is that I think the consumer remains very, very strong and therefore even though we're seeing consumer sentiment absolutely devastated and that is normally a great lead indicator, it is completely distorted by the pandemic and by the fact that household savings were so extremely high going into this period. So I think we don't get a recession until next year. Okay, because we've still got some of that stock of savings in place. Uh, what about the yield story then? Again, we'll talk to Stephen Major about this in a moment, but do you think we've peaked out on yields or because you're not quite so gloomy on the US consumer, do you think maybe yields actually can go a little higher still? So short term, I think we've peaked out. I think, you know, it makes sense for bonds to continually continue rallying at the moment over the next couple of weeks, perhaps the next couple of months. Um, for this cycle overall, no, I don't think we've seen a cycle peak in yields. And I'm in dying to hear how Stephen Major will tell me how I'm wrong on that in 10 minutes time because we know he is always a perma bull on treasuries um, but I am not in that camp I think that overall as I said the economy will hold up better that'll allow more hikes down the line from the Fed 